What's it like flying on an airline that just last year crashed one of their planes? Just how beaten up are their 40-year-old aircraft and why is there a booking system to use the loo? Well, this week I'm trying to find out as I take a flight on the Dominican airline Red Air. Well, good morning from this beautiful part of the world. This is La Romana in the Dominican Republic. We have been here for a few days at this amazing Hilton Resort here, enjoying everything they've got to offer. It's proper nice. They've got really nice restaurants, nice pools, everything. It's really, really good for a few days, but it's time to say goodbye today to the Dominican Republic as we head back home. First stop today then was to La Romana Airport, about a 15 minute drive from the hotel. All right, so we are flying from La Romana Airport today here in the Dominican Republic and we're flying on an airline that you might not have heard of before. Um, they're called Red Air and they are a Dominican subsidiary of a Venezuelan airline. That sounds amazing, doesn't it? And they fly from here with MD-80s. If you have heard of Red Air, it's probably because they crashed one of their planes about a year ago um, on the route that we're taking today. Red Air are a Dominican airline who started operations in 2020. They're a subsidiary of the Venezuelan airline Laser Airlines from where they leased two vintage MD-82 aircraft. They did have a third, but that one was written off a year ago when the landing gear collapsed and it ran off the runway at Miami before crashing into a communications tower and catching fire. Fortunately, everybody escaped and only a few people were hospitalized. We were just hoping that one of their two remaining aircraft would get us safely to Miami this afternoon. The check-in experience at La Romana could best be described as rather rustic. It's essentially a few check-in desks in the open air, where today you could check in either for a flight to Venezuela or for our flight to Miami. Hola, buenos dias. Hola, buenos dias. Uh, Miami? Now show me your immigration ticket. The ticket immigration. Uh, the, so which, which sorry, which, which do you, what do you need now? The e-ticket for Red Air or? No, 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 no. This is for immigration. You don't have to stamp this you take it, this over there. Ah, okay, that one there. Yeah. Right, okay, is this for Dominican? Yeah. Oh, okay. Uh, we, ha we haven't done that bit yet. I did, we didn't know we had to do that, so let me... Yeah, you have to do it. No okay. Problem. Do it uh, during the checking and try to do it. Okay, sorry. We made it over to the gate where our ride to Miami was waiting outside, complete with engineers scratching their heads as they worked on the plane, which was not exactly a welcome sight. Right there, we are finally through to the departure lounge here at La Romana Airport. It's not a massive airport, it's like only a little, this is, this is the entirety of the departure lounge here. They've got no um, wheelchair assistance here at La Romana Airport either. Yay! Um, so bless her, she's having to hobble the it's not, it's not a massive distance is granted, but you happen to hobble around a little bit here, aren't you? Do you want to tell people about what it is that you have? Because we get comments all the time, don't we? So, uh, not only do I have back, neck, shoulder issues, but I have a condition called fibromyalgia. Essentially, it's where I suffer pain. It is a condition that was diagnosed by an orthopaedic consultant at the hospital. Um, and essentially, if I do too much walking one day, I'm going to be in bed for days recharging. And it's also the long the long distances we're talking about here. I mean, we're talking about like walking the length of um, Houston Airport or walking the length of Atlanta Airport, which is something that you can't do, really. You're okay with little distances. Yeah. Like we've had to walk maybe 50 yards into the terminal. You can kind of go with yeah. that. It's not so much of an issue. Uh, but also the other thing is we don't necessarily need it here, but it needs to be on the system. Because when we get to Miami Airport at the other end, that's a massive airport, clearly, and it's going to have quite a lot of walking. I am hoping that we can just grab a wheelchair there yeah. and I'll push you through. Um, but that's that's basically the reason why. It's the long distances that Rage can't do. Um, and stairs, although today you might have to do a few stairs yeah. um, up onto the plane, um, but it's going to take us a while, I think. Trust me, guys, if I didn't need it and didn't need to use it, I would well, Of course, who would? Be, who be... would want to be stuck, stuck hanging around, waiting and being made to feel like an outcast like they do. Being made to feel like a burden. Eventually it was time to board the plane by which point somebody had showed up with a wheelchair to take Rage across to the aircraft. The steps up to the plane however would still be a bit of an issue because the airport doesn't have any way to get people with reduced mobility onto the aircraft. We were all told to line up and put our bags on the floor while a drugstore came along to check everyone's luggage. Drug scan complete, it was time to head across to our ride today. This 35-year-old McDonnell Douglas MD-82, originally delivered in 1988 to American Airlines. 
In 2014, it was bought by Laser Airlines in Venezuela, who moved it to their Dominican subsidiary, Red Air Dominicana, in 2021. Hello. Hello, welcome on board. Thank you. We're going to be on your left side. Awesome, thank you. This aircraft has a business class section at the front in a 2-2 configuration with economy class in a 3-2 configuration behind it like most MD-80s. Although the seats appear to have been changed since American owned her, the rest of the cabin was showing its age somewhat. Welcome on board the Red Air MD-80. What do you reckon, Rach? I'm reserving judgement. Oh, I hate it when you reserve judgement. <laughs> it's very tight, very snug, isn't it? Got our legs. I'm sure in that row in front, that's an exit row, but they've got um, a bit of extra leg room there. It's Oops, old so. and battered. Never mind, it's okay, we're on board now, the Red Air MD-80. This is a piece of aviation history, Rach. This plane is like 30 odd years old. Wonderful. Formerly belonging to, I think American Airlines had it originally, and now it's it was operating in Venezuela for a bit, and right. now it's um, flying here in the Dominican. Wonderful. And there's my view out of the window. I mean, the wing is looking slightly battered. Um, the aircraft itself, I mean, look at these retro sort of overhead things there. It's very, very cool. Um, and yeah, we'll be all on board anyway, finally. Finally, hopefully, um, we'll be on our way very soon. And with the flight to Caracas pushing back at the side of us fairly soon, it was our turn to push back and get on our way out to the runway. And with the brakes squealing underneath us, we backtracked down the runway to get a rare experience these days, a takeoff on board an MD-80. Today then took us north out of La Romana to cross Turks and Caicos and the Bahamas before landing in Miami. Flight time today was 2 hours and 9 minutes, cruising at 32,000 feet. Right then, so airborne out of La Romana in the Dominican Republic. Amazing takeoff that on the MD-80. I finally got a flight on an MD-80 where I can actually see out the window. I mean, admittedly, it's just over the wing um, and they're very battered old wing as well. I mean, it's kind of seen better days, hasn't it? But um, it's a window view nonetheless, and it's not the view of the side of an engine like I normally get when I fly out an MD-80 every other time. That's been my view. So um, finally, I've got an actual nice view out the window. Pretty cool. And I can say that I've actually officially had a nice flight on an MD-80, although we're still early days. <laughs> We've only just taken off. Um, yeah, the plane is, it, the plane's seen better days, let's be honest. It's a very old aeroplane, this. Um, but like going back to the 1980s it's seriously seriously cool um, not many airlines still fly the MD-80s these days Red Air um, obviously fly them on this um, twice daily flight between um, La Romana and Miami um, Laser Airlines also fly um, the MD-80s from Caracas in Venezuela to numerous destinations so you could always go to Venezuela if you fancy risking it flying down there I was actually planning originally to do that on this trip um, but Rach wasn't, wasn't too happy about me going to Venezuela. The whole kidnapping thing is a bit sort of, it's a bit kidnappy down there. Um, so um, yeah, that's why I'm not gone to Venezuela on this trip. I've just sort of um, cut it short effectively, and we've gone to the Dominican and then come back. But anyway, I'll sit back and relax. We've got about a two-hour flight now up to Miami. Rach, what are you thinking about the MD-80 so far? I'm pleased that they're almost all gone. Oh, really? You're not enjoying this Aviation Geeks no. paradise? No. On the MD-80. No. It's an amazing old aeroplane, 1980s charm. Does that mean <laughs> I've got 1980s charm? We both have got 1980s charm. Thank you to this week's video sponsor, Surfshark, who always come to the rescue whenever I want to watch some British TV when I'm travelling.
Surfshark is a VPN provider and what that means quite simply is that you can use their software to connect to the internet from anywhere in the world and make it look like you're just at home, which has some really good benefits. For instance, I could be sitting here by a sunny pool in Vietnam and um, watching some Top Gear on my phone. It lets me watch EastEnders here in the middle of the Australian outback. Oh yeah, I'll have a Castle Main 4X please mate. Cheers. Surfshark even lets me catch up with only fools and horses while I'm here in New York. Now Surfshark are offering you a massive 83% discount plus three months free when you use my promo code Noel Phillips at the link on the screen now. What are you waiting for? Even Baby Shark approves. stuck with chewing gum to the side of the seat. Oh nice. See that? Oh that's great. Ew. I'm gonna have to actually peel that off my shorts now. <laughs> oh no. Fortunately for me I found an ingenious way to get the chewing gum off my shorts. Right, so one thing I'm finding interesting already on this airline, um, you have to reserve your spot in the bathroom um, if you want to go to the loo. You have to press the call bell, um, then they have to go and prepare the bathroom for you so you can actually go and use it. Doesn't sound, um, just doesn't, doesn't sound that hopeful, does it? But I'm going to try that in a bit. We'll try reserving the loo um, for a time when I think I might need the loo a little bit later on in the flight potentially, and then we'll go and do a loo review. I mean, it must be a very exclusive loo if you have to reserve a space. See if I can get a reservation before we land. And a few minutes later, I use a patented toilet reservation system to book myself a slot in the loo. It's time for the Noel Phillips Loo Review. <laughs> Alright then, time for the loo review on the MD80. I'm right at the back of the plane, uh, between the engines. The engine's right above, or right at the side of my head here. Oh, it's so loud. It's so cool. You feel the heat off this engine as well, man. That is amazing. I managed to reserve my slot, um, and they came and prepared the toilet freshly for me. And let's have a look what we've got. So, yes, we've got a nice sink in the corner. Not too bad, actually. Quite nice. The flush is broken there. Uh, the toilet itself is um, just a standard toilet, really. Please do not waste foreign objects. We can waste non foreign objects, but we're not allowed to waste foreign objects. Well, what does that mean? What does that even mean? Anyway, um, little handle there to hold on to, aren't you? Sitting on the loo doing your thing. And no fumar in the banyo, no smoking in the bog. We're not allowed to disable the smoke detector according to the Dominican Republic, anyway. Um, and that's pretty much it. With oxygen mask up there so that you can inhale your oxygen while you're sat on the loo. That's always a nice added bonus, isn't it? Um, yes, there we go. That's the loo on the Red Air MD80. It is so cool, this plane. Just standing here, the massive engines at the side of it. I have just walked through the back of the cabin and saw the four, four passengers sat at the side of the engine in the Noel Phillips spot, um, as I will call it. Um, and um, yeah, I'm glad I'm not sitting right about there today. But so far, quite enjoying this ride. It's a pretty cool plane to ride on, at least. Um, and yeah, it's um, in 2023, still flying on an MD80. It's just incredible. I'm going to enjoy every minute of this. That was the Noel Phillips Loo Review. One thing that's really cool about the MD80s is the door that you get at the back of the cabin. But one thing that's not so cool is these seats here where I usually end up, which have a view just of the side of the engine. As I got back to my seat, the crew came round with a refreshment service and today I took a can of Diet Coke. As we headed further north, the fasten seatbelt sign came on as we hit some turbulence and I noticed something a little bit strange that was going on up at the front of the plane. So rather interestingly, have you noticed the cockpit door has been open for the whole flight? Yes. There is people in the forward cabin up in business class but they've literally, we've so far we've done the entire flight with the flight deck door open every now and then 
they pull a curtain across to walk through to the um, business class cabin and you can see the <laughs> the crew behind yes and you interesting can see the, you see the shape of the windows through the um, curtain through the curtain yeah interesting i didn't think that was allowed in the us i have no idea <laughs> Don't know, is it allowed to fly with the flight deck door open for the entire flight? I have no idea. I don't know. But if we was in business class, we'd get a good view out the front window anyway. That would be cool. So I wasn't quite sure how they were going to enforce the whole kind of going to the loo without a reservation thing. But they are enforcing it. People are getting up to go and use the bathrooms and um, being sent back to their seats. Um, and told that they need to reserve it before they can go back <laughs> to the toilet. So bizarre. How odd. What's that all about? Right, then we're starting our descent down into Miami. You excited, Rach? Yes, I want to get off this plane. Yes. This is, remember, this is where this this other plane in this airline's fleet came unstuck last time. <laughs> yeah, you keep reminding me things. We'll be, we'll be all right. The emergency exits are just there, look. Dude, if I need an emergency exit on this flight, I'm scuppered, aren't I? Because my body is giving out today, so you're going to have to drag me. I don't mind dragging you. I'll drag you. I'll, dra I'll drag you off. Um, but yeah, um, so this is, yeah, we're, we're about to land in Miami. Rach is a little bit nervous, I think. Are you nervous? You all right? Nah, what happens, happens. Be right, be right. Um... We'll, we'll be fine. Everybody got off that other one anyway when it came off the runway. It was fine. We'll be, we'll be absolutely fine. Anyway, I'm sure. I'm sure. So with neither of us feeling particularly confident about our landing into Miami, it was time for us to start our descent and enjoy the views of Miami as we came into land. to have survived a flight on red air. Our flight to Miami on red air cost us $116 each or about £94, working out to 19 cents per mile. Now, as much as usually I'd happily take a rare plane like the MD-80 over, say, a JetBlue A320, I think next time we want to travel on holiday to the Caribbean, we'll just play it safe and fly on something a little bit more vanilla. Welcome. Bye-bye. And as we stepped off the plane, it soon became clear that much like in La Romana, Red Air hadn't organised any assistance for us at Miami either. Once again, the airport's let us down, no assistance is available. <laughs> Yay! So Rich was having to hobble slowly through the airport. Are you okay? I am at the minute. Hopefully it's not too far to passport control. And then once again, in the words of Will Smith, welcome to Miami. Welcome to Miami, Rach. <laughs> what did you think to Red Air on the MD-80? Yeah, if it's to Justin again, I'm gonna wrap my walking stick around your head. Okay. See, Rachel's getting to see now the sorts of airlines that I fly on all the time. Um, yeah, but you don't <laughs> No, that's that true. Never true. Makes it. No, exactly. Um, but anyway, we're here, we're in Miami. Um, we're going to try and find where our next flight goes from with Spirit Airlines, who are already three hours late. So yay, it's going to be a fun adventure. But um, in the meantime, well, I hope you've enjoyed this video. Let us know, as always, what you thought to it down in the comments, and we'll see you on the next one. Bye for now.